Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Mikey Lou. Welcome back to my channel. This week, John Lewis wants to know about fossil galaxies. So I found just the perfect topic to talk about. The discovery of a fossil galaxy at the heart of our galaxy, the Milky Way. So let's start. Recently, astronomers made the discovery of a fossil galaxy at the heart of the Milky Way. The colossal structure was discovered when astronomers analysed the stars that inhabit our galaxy. There are believed to be at least 100 billion stars that exist in our galaxy, but some are really small and not very bright, and this makes detecting them quite difficult. On top of that, it turns out that space is filled with interstellar dust. This dust obscures much of the starlight, and particularly so for faraway stars. The dust is also more dense close to the centre of the Milky Way, making things even harder to see in that direction. To date, we have only observed about 1 billion stars in the Milky Way. That's just about 1% of what we believe exists. For this reason, it wasn't until recently that the galaxy was discovered. They used a telescope that could see the infrared radiation that was able to penetrate through the dust. The astronomers looked at the properties of the stars in the Milky Way. They used these stellar spectra, a measure of how the starlight changes across different wavelengths, to measure the chemical composition of the stars. This tells us the star's metallicity, the abundance of elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. Don't ask me why, but to an astronomer, anything heavier than hydrogen and helium is considered a metal. Looking at the metallicity of the stars in the Milky Way, they found close to the galactic centre a population of metal-poor stars that were chemically distinct from the surrounding metal-rich stars. The thing about metallicity is that we believe most metals form in the core of a star and they evolve over time. Through stellar winds or when a star dies, these metals are expelled into space in the form of gas and dust to be recycled for the birth of new stars. Stars that have low metallicity should be old stars that formed in the metal poor universe, whereas those with high metallicity are those that are very young stars. The low metallicity population of stars found near the center of the Milky Way should be old, much older than the typical stars of the rest of the galaxy. But there's no reason to believe that they didn't form in the galaxy itself. It could be that the stars just happened to form in a region of the Milky Way where there was a lack of metals and dust. Careful analysis of the chemical composition of the stars, what the stars are made of, revealed that at least a quarter of them must have been accreted by the Milky Way. They bear similar resemblance to the elemental abundances found in satellite galaxies, galaxies currently orbiting around the Milky Way. By comparing the distribution of the elements present in the stars with simulations, we know that the star formation was quenched really early on. Star formation stopped happening. This suggests that the galaxy was accreted very early on too to trigger the quenching. They believe that the galaxy collided and then merged with the Milky Way about 10 billion years ago. The chemical abundance also tells us about the mass of the galaxy to be about 500 million solar masses. To back up the case, in addition to the spectra, the astronomers also found the dynamical properties of the stars to be distinct from other stars in the galaxy. Using the distances and the proper motions of the stars observed from the space telescope Gaia, they saw that the energies and the angular momentum were clearly distinct from other stars. The suspected structure is clumped together about 13,000 light years from the galactic centre. Given that the chemical and dynamical properties of these stars are so different from the other stars in the Milky Way, it only makes sense that they were originating from an ancient galaxy that merged with our own galaxy billions of years ago. By studying these stars and this galaxy, we can learn its history. The merging would have been a huge event in our galaxy's timeline. Okay, so my biggest problem with what we've talked about so far is that the media have jumped onto the topic and called the galaxy a fossil galaxy, namely because it's filled with old stars that haven't changed much since the collision. Essentially, it's a fossil. 
The problem is this is not a fossil galaxy and nowhere in the paper of its discovery does it even call it a fossil galaxy. Galaxies with old stars are not as rare as you might think. When we look out on the universe, the further away a galaxy is, the longer it takes for their light to reach us. This means that the furthest away galaxy that we know of and have observed, GNZ11, located at 13.4 billion light years away, we're seeing it as it was when the universe was just 400 million years old. So when I hear fossil galaxy, what I think of is a fossil group. These are remnants of clusters or groups of galaxies that due to gravity eventually spiral towards its center and merge together leaving a single giant central galaxy. The closest known fossil group to Earth is NGC 6482. It's a giant elliptical galaxy about 180 million light years away. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I'll link the paper in the description box below. And in the meanwhile, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.